interviews and notes to the coaches and players for America's team, let us go inside the stars on 105.3 The Fan. Good morning, Metroplex. Shout out to the 6 a.m. club. Sean Trafe, RJ Choppy, and Bobby Bell once again joining us early. What's going on? Uh, yesterday, it was I was concerned that you needed me to cover uh, because I didn't know if Choppy had long movid. And then today, <laughs> it was I just couldn't sleep really last night. So I woke up. Laura kept waking me up. They're back in school from spring break. And so she's not sleeping great. She's getting into our bed early. And so kept waking me up. And so I was just like, all right, I'm getting up. Freezing from uh, no thermostat changeover? Yeah, I didn't switch it over to the heat. Uh, Kristen had to take a muscle relaxer last night. So she was knocked out. It didn't matter uh, how cold it was in the house. And I prefer it mid 60s in the house if, if it's up to me. So Yikes. yeah, it was like 66 when I woke up. All right. Um, I guess we start with the player trending yesterday because of some Cowboys and their official goodbyes. It was Trent Williams. Ryan, uh, you probably won't be able to show the video, maybe the still shot. Trent Williams being blamed for ending the career of Leighton Van Der Esch. Do you remember talking about this at the time? Uh, I remember the video people posted weeks later, but not not the day after. The day after that game, we talked about that. There's a, there was a lot going no on chance. the day after the game. Yeah, we know. There was now, a lot. Which, which loss was this? Niners. This was 42 to yeah, 10. Yeah, I know. Which this, Niners This loss? was 42 to 10 okay. in San Francisco. This is the one that Jerry screamed at us for. Or uh, screamed at me for, I should be clear. Uh, that's right. So what do we make of this? I know we're supposed to have on our Cowboys blinders. Uh, was the Trent Williams play dirt? Now look. Leighton Van Der Esch's neck was compromised anyway. We all mm -hmm. knew that he had injury issues. Mm -hmm. uh, Trent Williams kind of, he does push him in the back, but he the result of it is Van Der Esch hitting Micah. There it is right there. Ryan's got it on the fan cam and Twitch. So he's got uh, Van Der Esch from behind. I remember talking about this, and I'm, I'm not blaming Trent Williams for directing Leighton into Micah which ended up causing the hit and the injury. Nope, not at all. I, I mean, he happened to be blocking him at the time, but this wasn't like some dirty play. And or that some... may have been illegal right there. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, that, look, been, yeah. that looks bad on that still frame. When you watch it in real time, it's very close. It's like he's hooking and he's coming around. Yeah. And I can blame him for blocking Vander Esch straight up in the back, but directly... WWE throwing him into the partner on the outside of the ropes and the turnbuckle, knowing that that was going to happen. Come on, y'all. It's like it's uh, I don't even remember who did it for the Panthers. It's like blaming whoever for the Panthers for breaking Romo's collarbone. And it's like he he had issues with the injury. The injury like is something that cropped up throughout his career. Yeah. It was somebody was going to hit him again. It was going to happen again. Leighton Van Der Esch had concern. They, there were concerns about his neck coming out of Boise State that teams were looking at. And so you're talking about a guy who, if it didn't happen there, it was probably going to happen another point. Like, that's just the way that it was. If, if you see the up close, all right, and then you just start there, that's one thing. If you see the entire thing, I mean, it's not like he just kind of like, he was already on the outside. He just kind of moved him away. It wasn't, did it end his career? Sure. That doesn't mean that it was like purposely, hey, let me try to end your career on this play. Like that, there's a, there's a massive difference uh, in the two. It's it's unfortunately it's football. It's like this is part of this is part of football. Like you're gonna you're you're engaged in plays at a thousand miles an hour, and some of them are gonna get away from you, and someone's gonna get hurt. I mean, it, it sucks. It's the reality of the sport. This is this not sorry. This isn't Greg Williams putting bounties on people. I, I was going to say, this isn't Albert Hainsworth stomping on Andre Gerard. Like, it's not some egregious attack. Like, he was playing football, and these are the sort of things that happened, and they happened a lot to Leighton Van Der Esch. What, what, during the course of his career, how many times do we see him laying on the turf? Like, like where, where we're like, is he going to get up? Like, three or four different times? It, it happened a lot. That, that was the one time I've seen Dan Quinn snap was after that game, and he was going out to talk to Leighton Van Der Esch's wife, and... The photogs didn't know any better. They were just taking photos. They're like, oh, Dan Quinn's walking out of the locker. They didn't know why. And Dan Quinn, when he walked back over, he goes, uh, hey, how about you guys have a little bit of class? I was talking to that man's wife. And I was like, oh, oh okay. Wow. Did you know, turn the hat around for a serious conversation? Jeez. Oh, there was uh, no hat there. Oh, no hat No there. hat. Um, Van Der Esch missing time because of neck injuries in 2019, 2022, and 20. 23. So he's stepping away at the age of 28. How do you summarize the career, Choppy? 
I think he was a good player. I'm obviously, I don't think there's any question about that. I think that he, he was a guy who exceeded his talent level. Man, I was shocked yesterday when I read after a six-year career. I said, that's it? That's it. That's it? Leighton Van Ness was only around here for yeah. six years. I know. It's, that's the thing. It's like you... you Doesn't it seem like nine? It like seems longer. It does seem longer, but... And it, it also seems like a little less because he missed so much time, too. It was like, you know, how many years did you actually get out of him? It was the draft here in Dallas. That was the yeah. Jason Witten retirement surprise. That was the same weekend. You know, it's like they... He exceeded, I think he exceeded his talent and just couldn't overcome his injuries. That's like, that's how I would describe his his NFL tombstone, if you want to call it that. He he got the most out of his talent level, his ability that he possibly could. But if it was the fact that he his body shouldn't have been that size, like Sean Lee, and Sean Lee just couldn't maintain health with the size of the body that he had to have to play in the National Football League, or he just got snake bit by injuries... Like, you can't separate the two. The guy overachieved talent-wise, and he just couldn't play and stay healthy enough to maintain a 10-year 10, 10 career. He was such a fantastic story. Like, if you go back and look through his younger years, he, he grew up in this tiny town, Riggins, Idaho, where they didn't have enough kids at the high school to play normal football. He was playing eight-man football in high school. And he had to walk on at Boise State. Like he was not he was not a scholarship player when he got to Boise State initially, walked on there, you know, overcame a lot, was you know, when you look at the way that he tested at the combine, he was one of the most freakish athletes to play linebacker in the NFL. And that first year that he played, he was Well, remember the seven on seven football? Yeah. Scouting him from that? Yeah. And, and him playing quarterback. He was playing quarterback and like defensive end there. And he was Pretty also cool. like, you know, an all state basketball player or something like that. I mean, he was he was a really special athlete, and that first year, there were so that that team doesn't. I, I don't know that that team makes the playoff. I know Amari Cooper was the big. You made the trade, and you go on that run. I don't know that they make the playoffs without Vanders. There were a couple of games, specifically, I'm thinking of the game in Philly on the road where he makes a big third down stop to yeah. ice the game. He was incredible that rookie year, and it's just the injuries piled up after that, and he was never quite the same. Yeah. But. It's funny you mentioned like the the the, the town he was in and and the, and the size. It's like I saw this this thing on Instagram the other day about Prosper back in 1985. Did y'all see this? No. Was it dirt? No, close. 1985, Prosper had like 88 kids in their school. Like they had to. The football team was the basketball team. The basketball team was the baseball team. Like it's the same kind of thing, right? It was such a small, tiny place. And this was even more magnified than that, where he's sitting there playing quarterback and end, uh, and, and and playing eight man or seven man. Hey, pay. Yeah, on the Fantex A seven seven eight eight one one zero five three, the two one four regarding Leighton Vander Esch. He already had neck neck issues, so it was only a matter of time before he went down. And the two one four also says once again a waste of a first round pick by the Cowboys. Ooh, a waste. This is always interesting to define a successful draft pick. Is it off the second contract, Jalen Smith? Is it number of years you stick around, Randy Gregory? Is it straight up games played? Uh, is it Pro Bowls for a first rounder? Obviously, it's very, very subjective, um, but that is your own definition of defining a successful pick. Let, let's let's look at the guys that went directly behind him. Okay, uh, the, the guy what, they really what, liked what, that year. What number did Van Der Esch go? Tw uh, Nineteen. Uh, they really loved Derwin James. That's who they wanted. But Derwin, they wanted Derwin James or Vita Vea. Both those guys hit. They were really good players. Vander Esch made a Pro Bowl that year. He was. I, there's an old tweet from back in November of his rookie year where I can't remember what it was. It was Lance Zerline or somebody was like, when you watch Leighton Vander Esch play right now, you might think he's the best player in the NFL. Oh like that, he was playing at wow. such a. People forget how good he was his rookie year, but these are the guys right behind him. Frank Ragnow, center guy who they had Frederick at the time. There was no reason for them to think they needed an offensive lineman. Billy Price, center, who was on the practice squad for the Cowboys last year. Good buddy of uh, Matt Pittman's. Uh, Rashawn Evans, linebacker, Titans, who ended up on the Cowboys and was released again. Isaiah Wynn, tackle, who's not been able to stay healthy. And then, okay, now you get down to Carolina, 24, five picks later, there's DJ Moore. And then there's Hayden Hurst. But, I mean, realistically... yeah. The fact that he made the difference that he did, I, I'd say he was worth it. It's just he falls in line 
with this trend that the Cowboys have had for 12 years now that their linebackers that they pick, they all have massive injury issues that derail their careers. <laughs> Yeah, I think the best way for me to summarize it is, man, I was just hoping for a lot more and expecting more after that start. After that start, yeah. it felt it felt a little disappointing. That's the way I would talk about it. I mean, obviously, the first word that's going to come to mind is injuries. Uh, maybe wolf number two uh, for the description. Uh, but the wolf right. after, that, after that start, I was hoping for a lot more, and it just kind of tailed away from that. <laughs>